Back in the early days of YouTube, a video of an obscure Jackson 5 song gained an unlikely amount of views. Why did this happen? The video was called The World's Prettiest Bassline, and this intriguing title was enough to gain the attention of bass players all over the world. To date, it has 1.8 million views. The track was Darling Dear, and the bass player was James Jameson. I was fascinated by this video for a long time, so one day I sat down to learn it. When trying to play this bass line, you realise why all the top players name James Jameson as a major influence. And whether you know it or not, if you play bass, Jameson has influenced your playing too. We're going to look at what makes this bass line so special, but first, who was James Jameson? He started as an upright bass player, performing jazz and blues in clubs around Detroit. In 1959, he started working as a session musician at Motown Records as part of a session band that would become known as the Funk Brothers, a group of session musicians that were responsible for most of the recording at Motown. They were also never credited on a record until 1971. The record in question was Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. They also played for legendary artists such as Stevie Wonder, The Temptations, The Supremes, Martha and the and Gladdy Knight and The Pips. His technique was unusual by today's standards. As an upright player, transitioning from electric bass, he brought over a lot of techniques used in the upright bass world. This included using one finger, which is amazing to think about because some of these lines are very fast and complex. There isn't a lot of video footage of James Jameson, but here we see him playing with Marvin Gaye. You can see the one finger technique. It's often referred to as the hook. It also looks like he's using his thumb on the outside to mute the unused strings. Another idiosyncrasy of his technique is to always use the open string in favour of the 5th fret. When you start playing some of his bass lines, this starts to make sense, as something previously difficult becomes easier with the use of an open string. When I first tried some of these bass lines, I wasn't aware of this open string technique and I found some of them quite difficult to play. So if you've ever struggled with a James Jameson bass line, go back and try it with open strings. You'll see it makes a lot more sense. Let's look at an excerpt from one of his bass lines. I really like what he plays here. So the chords here are roughly D minor seven to C minor seven to B flat major seven. The D minor is made up of these chord tones, D, F, a and C. They are called the root, the flat third, the fifth, and the flat seven. So let's analyze what he's playing here. So over the D minor seven chord, we hear the root of D. The next note he plays is the G sharp, which is a tritone away from the root D. Most people will experience this as a harsh dissonance, but then straight afterwards, it moves to the note A which is the fifth of the chord. So why does that G sharp work? Well, the best bass lines, music and art in general, use something called tension and resolution. If we play the G sharp over the D minor chord, most people will experience that as unpleasant. The note straight after that, the A, is the fifth of the chord, which is an extremely consonant note. Because the G sharp is just one note away, we experience the tension, and then with the A, it's the resolution. So the G sharp has been used as what's called a chromatic approach note. So you can also target chord tones from two chromatic notes below, and that's what's happening in the next part. So the target note is D on the next octave, and we're playing two notes before that to resolve into the D. So the C, that's contained within the chord, the C sharp is not, and that's what's known as a seventh interval, or a major seven, and that creates a lot of tension before again resolving into the D. So altogether it's played. 
So as I already discussed, as far as I know, he used the open strings more than the fifth frets. But if we move that into a more familiar position, it might make more sense. So, so far, he's used the two harshest dissonances over the chord, the tritone and the seventh. But he has used them with purpose to resolve to a chord tone. This idea of decorating chord tones with chromatic approach notes is a powerful tool, but it is possible to overuse it. And that's one thing that always strikes me about James Jameson's bass lines. There's always some balance in there. So next we move to the C minor seven chord. And to get there, we're gonna use another chromatic note. We're gonna play a muted note. I think it might be muted or it might be an open string. It's hard to tell. So we use the muted note and then the seventh again to build tension and then resolve to the root of the next chord, which is C. So over the C minor seven, we mostly get chord tones, which is the idea of balance that we're talking about. And then a few scale passing tones at the end. And then we're into the next chord, B flat major. So all together. Another largely unique feature of James Jameson's playing style is he often didn't repeat his bass lines. There are little to no repeated parts in the song. It often makes me wonder if this whole thing was improvised or was it created meticulously? It's probably somewhere in between, but if you have an insight on this, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. To demonstrate this, if we look at the same part later on in the song, we get something completely different. I just want to say quickly that while researching this video, I found another video out there which was very similar to what I wanted to talk about. So I tried to focus on different things, but you should definitely check that one too. Uh, link is in the description. I've transcribed and analysed many bass lines over the years, but nothing has ever come close to the Jameson style. If you haven't already, I recommend trying some. Thanks very much. <laughs>